Today, I will narrate to you a series of ahadith and narrations, which at first will seem to be fragmented, disconnected, and having very little in common. But as time progresses today, we will realize that in fact, there is something in common. The very first narration was narrated by Imam al-Bukhari and Muslim on the authority of Abi Hurairah. That the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, بَيْنَمَا رَجُلٌ يَمْشِي بِطَرِيقٍ إِشْتَدَّ عَلَيْهِ الْعَطَشِ فَوَجَدَ بِئْرًا فَنَزَلَ فِيهَا فَشَرِبَ مِنْهَا ثُمَّ رَقَى فَإِذَا كَلْبٌ يَلْهَثُ يَأْكُلُ الثَّرَى مِنَ الْعَطَشِ فَقَالَ لَقَدْ بَلَغَ هَذَا الْكَلْبُ مِنَ الْعَطَشِ مِثْلُ الَّذِي كَانَ قَدْ بَلَغَ مِنِّي He says there was a man who was walking on a path and he experienced intense thirst. Then he came across a well of water. He climbed inside. He drank from the well. And then he came back out. And then he came across a dog that was very thirsty. It was hanging out its tongue and licking the earth because of thirst. And then the man, he said to himself, this dog is experiencing the same thirst that I was experiencing moments ago. So what did he do? He went back inside the well and he filled his shoe with water and then he caught his shoe with his mouth. He climbed back out. He gave water to the dog. The Prophet wasallam said, فَشَكَرَ اللَّهُ لَهُ فَغَفَرَ لَهُ Allah Almighty was grateful because of what he did, therefore Allah forgave all of his sins. In another narration that Imam al-Bukhari narrates in his Sahih, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, فَشَكَرَ اللَّهُ لَهُ فَغَفَرَ لَهُ فَأَدْخَلَهُ الْجَنَّةِ Allah was grateful to what he did. So Allah forgave his sins and so Allah allowed him to enter paradise. Shelf this narration in your memory for a moment as we turn our attention to the second. Imam al-Bukhari al-Muslim narrate on the authority of Abi Hurairah that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, بَيْنَمَا كَلْبٌ يُطِيفُ بِرَكِيَّةٍ يَعْنِ يَحُومُ حَوْلَ بِئْرٍ إِذْ رَأَتْهُ بَغِيٌّ مِنْ بَغَايَا بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلِ فَنَزَعَتْ مُوْقَهَا فَاسْتَقَتْ لَهُ بِهِ فَغَفَرَ اللَّهُ لَهَا بِهِ There was a dog, he says, alayhi salatu was salam, that was walking around a well, licking the earth because of thirst, and then a woman, a prostitute woman from the women of Bani Israel, saw the dog in the state. So she took off her shoe, and she filled it with water, and she gave water to the dog, and Allah Almighty therefore forgave her sins. The sins of a prostitute was forgiven due to the single sip of water that she provided an animal. Keep this narration in mind, brothers and sisters, as we move on to the third. Imam Muslim narrates in his Sahih on the authority of Abi Hurairah that the Messenger وسلم, said, لَقَدْ رَأَيْتُ رَجُلًا يَتَقَلَّبُ فِي الْجَنَّةِ فِي شَجَرَةٍ كَانَتْ فِي ظَهْرِ الطَّرِيقِ قَطَعَهَا he says, I saw a man tossing and turning in paradise, enjoying its delights because of a tree that was present in the middle of the road, which he cut down for the welfare of the Muslims. So Allah allowed him to enter Jannah. Allahu Akbar. Keep this narration in mind, brothers and sisters, as we move on to the fourth from the five that I will mention. Imam Muslim narrates in his Sahih on the authority of Abi Hurairah that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said مَرَّ رَجُلٌ بِغُصْنِ شَجَرَةٍ كَانَتْ فِي ظَهْرِ الطَّرِيقِ فَقَالَ وَاللَّهِ لَأُنَحِيَنَّ هَذِهِ عَنْ طَرِيقِ الْمُسْلِمِينَ لَا تُؤْذِيهِمْ فَأُدْخِلَ الْجَنَّةِ He says there was a man who was walking in a road and he came across a branch from a tree that was in the middle of the road 
He says, Wallahi, I am going to move this branch from the tree, from the middle of the road, so that it does not harm the Muslims. The Prophet ﷺ said, so Allah allowed him to enter paradise because of that good deed. Keep this narration in mind and we will move on to the fifth and last of these narrations. This was mentioned by Ibn Hisham in his seerah. Speaking about the episode, the nightmare of the day of Uhud. A day that happened to be one of the most traumatizing days upon the life of the Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his Sahaba when he was cut and bruised all over and his face was hemorrhaging with blood his head and shoulder were wounded his teeth were broken Alayhi Salatu Wasallam and 70 of his Sahaba were slain and news in fact spread on the battlefield that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had in fact been killed shortly before the pagans finally left back to Mecca the Sahaba, a group of companions, were on a nearby cliff and the Messenger وسلم, wanted to climb a rock but he was unable to due to the sheer fatigue and exhaustion that his body was exposed to on that day. Talhat ibn Ubaidillah, having seen the inability of our Messenger وسلم, to climb, he fell on all fours, allowing the Prophet وسلم, to use his back as a platform to climb the rock above him. As soon as he did this, the Messenger وسلم, said, Awjaba Talha. Talha has made paradise incumbent for himself. Paradise is now for Talha. These are five different narrations pertaining to five different people that occurred in five different places that happened during five different times. And at first, there seems to be very little that they have in common for these reasons. However, as you have all perhaps spotted, there is in fact an unmissable underlying theme that they all share. Namely, that the paths to Jannah are not always the obvious ones. Never in the life of Talha ibn Ubaidillah did he imagine that merely going on all fours will be the means of the happiest day in his life when Allah will allow him to enter Jannah, but it was. Never for one moment in the life of that prostitute did she imagine that merely giving water to a thirsty dog would mean that her sins would be forgiven. But the Prophet ﷺ said that it was. Never for one moment did that man who moved the branch from the tree, from the path of the people, ever imagine that this would become the happiest day in his life, the turning point in his life when Allah will give him access to Jannah. None of them would have imagined this. What am I getting at? Many, many times in the life of a Muslim, a place in Jannah may finally be reserved for him or her due to the smallest of actions in our eyes. This is when Allah Ta'ala sees sincerity within a person and a genuine craving for the home of the hereafter. Thus Allah allows an opportunity to present itself to him. An opportunity that he pounces on wholeheartedly, sincerely and with sidq, truthfulness, truthfulness when dealing with Allah. And then the days and the months and the years pass. And he forgets completely about that small good deed that he had one day put forward. But little had he noticed that that small good deed was in fact his moment. That marked the turning point in his life. Where his sins would finally be dropped. And access to Jannah will finally be given to him. Last week, brothers and sisters, the Khatib... The guest speaker here on this pulpit, Jazahullah Khairan, reminded us of a very heart softening narration. Where the Messenger وسلم, told us about a man who will present to Allah Almighty 99 huge scrolls of sins as far as your eye can see. Asrafa ala nafsihi, he had transgressed so much. And then these sins will be placed on one side of the scale. And he will be sure now that his place is Jahannam. But then Allah Almighty will bring out a small card. This was a good deed that he put forward. 
And on the card it said, La ilaha illallah. And that card will be placed on the other side of the scale and the man will say, Ya Rabbi, what will this one good deed benefit me? It is finished. Allah says to him, Innaka lan tudlam. You will not be oppressed. You will not be wronged. By the qadr of Allah, that small card is placed on one side of the scale and it comes crashing down and all of those sins are catapulted in the air and Allah therefore allows him to enter Jannah. The Messenger وسلم, says, nothing is heavier than the name of Allah. This was the narration we heard last week. But I ask a question, is this the entire picture? Or is there something missing? How come a single statement wiped away all of his sins whilst we know that there will be many Muslims who say La ilaha illallah and they will still enter the hellfire. Why was he treated differently? This is what we want to get to. Imam Ibn Taymiyyah, he solves the riddle in his book Minhaj al-Sunnah al-Nabawiyyah. And he says, فَهَذِهِ حَالُ مَنْ قَالَهَا بِإِخْلَاصٍ وَصِدْقٍ هَذِهِ حَالُ مَنْ قَالَهَا بِإِخْلَاصٍ وَصِدْقٍ كَمَا قَالَهَا هَذَا الشَّخْصُ وَإِلَّا وَإِلَّا فَأَهْلُ الْكَبَائِرِ الَّذِينَ دَخَلُوا النَّارَ كُلُّهُمْ يَقُولُونَ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ وَلَمْ يَتَرَجِّحْ قَوْلُهُمْ عَلَى سَيِّئَاتِهِمْ كَمَا تَرَجِّحَ قَوْلُ صَاحِبِ الْبِطَاقَةِ he gives us the secret and he says, explaining why this man's statement of La ilaha illallah forgave all of his sins. Whilst many other people who say La ilaha illallah will still enter the hellfire for some time. He gives us the answer and he says, because this was a person who said La ilaha illallah with sincerity and with sidq, with truthfulness. He says, because we know that people will meet Allah Yawm Al-Qiyamah with major sins, Muslims, and they will still be entered into the hellfire despite the statement of La Ilaha Illallah. And it will not be heavier than their sins. Why? He says, that was a man who said it with sidq, with truthfulness. Allah. And this was the exact same thing that Ibn Taymiyyah said about the woman, the woman, the prostitute who gave water to the dog. He says, in the same reference, Min Haju Sunnat al Nabawiyyah. فَهَذِهِ سَقَدْ كَلْبًا بِإِيمَانٍ خَالِصٍ كَانَ فِي قَلْبِهَا فَغُفِرَ لَهَا بِهِ وَإِلَّا فَلَيْسَ كُلُّ بَغِيٍّ سَقَدْ كَلْبًا يُغْفَرْ لَهَا He says this was a woman who gave water to a thirsty dog with tremendous and pure iman that was in her heart when she did that good deed. He says because we know that not every prostitute who gives water to a dog has her sins forgiven. So what we understand, brothers and sisters, is that the crux of the matter is not so much the doing of the good deed or its outward size, but it is that secret ingredient called sidq that mixes with it, that raises a person or debases him. Sidq. This is the good deed that Allah Almighty wants from us and these are the good deeds that will benefit us. Yawmul Qiyamah. Abi Nu'ayim narrates in his Haliyatul Awliya and Ibn Abi Shayba in his Musannaf on the authority of Abi Burdah he says narrating on the authority of his father Abu Musa al-Ash'ari a tremendous narration that shows us what matters the most is the sidq in a good deed even if it is small he says i.e. Abu Burdah lamma hadara Aba Musa al-wafatu قال يا بني اذكروا صاحب الرغيف He says when my father Abu Musa al-Ash'ari was passing away He said to his children Oh my children remember the story of the man and the loaf of bread He says كان رجل يتعبد في صومعة أراه قال سبعين سنة لا يخرج من صومعته إلا في يوم أحد he says, there used to be a man in the past, the companion Abu Musa is saying, there used to be a man in the past who had dedicated his entire existence for the worship of Allah Almighty in isolation. 
and he was worshipping his creator for 70 consecutive years and he would only leave his monastery one day a week to seek his basic needs. One day when he was going out seeking his needs, Abu Musa says, Shabba shaytanu fi aynihim ra'ah. Shaytan made a woman seem very attractive to him in his eyes. So what did he do? He spent seven nights with her, i.e. seven nights in the haram. Wa inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. He says, ثُمَّ كُشِفَ عَنِ الرَّجُلِ غِطَاؤُهُ فَخَرَجَ تَائِبًا كُلَّمَا يَخْطُوا خُطْوَةً سَجَدَةً وَصَلَّةً وَتَابَ He says, then the veils of darkness that had covered his senses and covered his mind, they were finally lifted. And he said, Ya Rabbi, what am I doing? أَسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهِ He left the house of this woman in a state of tawbah and remorse. Every time he would take a step, he would fall down onto the floor, prostrating to Allah Ta'ala. He had repented to Allah. He kept walking and walking until nightfall came. And his footsteps took him to a group of men, 12 destitute poor men, who were gathering outside a particular shop. He was so tired and exhausted that he threw himself between two of these men. There was a monk, a rahib, in the city who would deliver 12 pieces of bread to these 12 poor men on a daily basis and he would send these bits of bread with his servant. One day the servant came carrying with him the 12 pieces of bread and he distributed them not noticing that there is a 13th person there, the man who had repented. And he gave them a piece of bread each and then he came to leave. And then one man said, مَا لَكَ لَمْ تُعْطِنِي رَغِيفِي why have you not given me my piece of bread? He said to him, I haven't withheld it. So ask the people here, did I accidentally give somebody two pieces of bread instead of one? And they all said, we only have one each. They don't know that the repenting man, he has taken one. This is where the twelfth piece has gone. And then the servant of the monk, he said, you are accusing me of keeping your bread for myself, aren't you? Wallahi la u'atika layla shay'ah. I am not going to give you any bread this evening. And then he left. So what did the penitent man do? He took his piece of bread and he gave it, he gave it back to the twelfth destitute man. And then he left. فَمَا أَصْبَحَ إِلَّا مَيِّتًا The very next morning, the man who had repented died. And now the angels of Allah Almighty were about to weigh up his good deeds and his sins. Listen to this, ya ikhwani, and my akhawat. Abu Musa al-Ash'ari, he says, فَوُزِنَتْ أَسَّبْعُونَ سَنَةِ يَعْنِ مِنَ الطَّاعَةِ وَالْعِبَادَةِ بِالسَّبْعِ اللَّيَالِ فَلَمْ تَزِنْ ثُمَّ وُزِنَ الرَّغِيفُ بِالسَّبْعِ اللَّيَالِ he says the angels of Allah Almighty took his 70 years worth of ibadah, worship, mashallah. 70 years of isolation and dedication. And they were placed on one side of the scale. And then those short seven nights that he spent in the haram were placed on the other side of the scale. Abu Musa says the seven nights were heavier than his 70 years of ibadah. So now the hellfire will be his home. But wait, he has a good deed. He has a good deed. The raghif, the piece of bread, is now placed on one side of the scale. And those seven nights of haram that outweighed the 70 years of worship, those seven nights of haram were placed on the other side of the scale and the piece of bread was heavier. And therefore he entered Jannah. Abu Musa al-Ash'ari would say to his kids, Oh my children, udhkuru sahib al raghif Always remember the story of the man and the loaf of bread. Ya Allah. 70 years of successive worship. And in the end, the only thing that saves him on the day of judgment was a piece of bread that he gave. Yeah, because that was his moment of sidq. This was his moment of truthfulness when dealing with Allah. And thus this weighed heavier than 70 years worth of ibadah. 
See, brothers and sisters, now, if I was to ask you all and to certainly ask myself, if we could now list all of the hasanat, the good deeds, that we had done as Muslims in the past, those good deeds that we did entirely for the sake of Allah, 100% without a gram's worth of showing off, where we felt the meanings of ubudiyah, being a slave of Allah, and a genuine craving for the home of the hereafter, how many hasanat could we list? Perhaps we could list one, two, or three. Yet the surprise will be on the day of judgment, brothers and sisters, when we see that everything else we had done in our 60, 70, 80 years worth of Islam may be cast aside, and it is only those one, two or three hasanat that ends up saving us and taking us into Jannah. These are the good deeds that Allah Almighty wants from you and I, the deeds that are mixed with that ingredient called sidq with Allah Almighty truthfulness. So with everything that we just heard, I ask, have you, my brother, found your moment? Or are you still searching for it? That moment could be a single tear that you shed at night away from the eyes of people in remembrance of Allah. That could be your moment that marks the turning point in your life when your sins are forgiven and entry to Jannah to you is granted. That could be your moment. Your moment could be an individual whom you bring with you to the masjid hoping that Allah will guide him or her. That could be your moment. Your moment could be anger that you suppress when you are angered. Or it could be a desire, a craving, a shahwa that you deny that your body really wants, but you leave it for the sake of Allah. That could be your moment. Your moment could be food that you place in the mouth of a hungry person or an animal. That certainly could be your moment. Your moment could be a smile in the face of your mother and father or an apology that you give to another Muslim. That can certainly be your moment. Your sister, my sister, your moment could be a decision to wear the hijab. Seeking only the face of Allah Almighty with sidq, truthfulness, that may be your moment. Therefore, with this said, my proposition is to myself and to you, my brothers and sisters, that we do not leave a stone unturned in pursuit of this moment of sidq. And every opportunity that presents itself to us to draw closer to Allah, we pounce at it with zeal and enthusiasm, because this could be this could be our turning point, that could be our moment. Every morning when you wake up, brothers and sisters, make an intention in your heart, a firm resolve, that I am going to carry out at least one good deed today. That I hope I want to please nobody with it except Allah, hoping that this will be my moment of sidq, of truthfulness when my sins are forgiven and access to Jannah is granted.